Good morning and welcome to Church of the Redeemer, a just peace and open and affirming congregation. No matter where you are on life's journey, you matter, and we are glad that you are with us this morning. There will not be any Bible study tomorrow because of the holiday, but I hope you will join us next Monday when we resume at 1 p.m. via Zoom. If you have received notices that you need to update your Zoom, I would encourage you to do that because I believe that after May 30th, you will no longer be able to get on to Zoom meetings if you have not done the update. Um, so if you get that, if you get that notification, um, then please say yes, you would like to update. And this only applies to people who um, are using a computer. It does not apply to, to the phone. In addition to having worship live here on Zoom, a recording of this worship service will be on our YouTube page that you can find at Church of the Redeemer UCP um, on uh, West Lake, Ohio, that you can find on the, uh, on the YouTube channel. And it is also on our Church of the Redeemer UCC Facebook page. And those will be up usually by late morning on, it may not be up tomorrow because of the holiday. It may not be up until Tuesday. Generosity to the Lakewood Community Center with your donations of cereal. Please continue to bring your boxes of cereal and leave them in the container outside the front door. If you would like to help placing additional flags on the lawn, please contact me. We have volunteers through June 4th, but if anyone would like to join me today or tomorrow, I'm flexible on which day. Uh, I'm checking the weather forecast. Um, to place additional flags or on future Mondays, please contact me. By the next time we place flags, we will have more than 2,000 on our front lawn. That is 2,000 families impacted by COVID-19. Another way in which we have to help feed the hungry is through the virtual walk for the Hunger Network. Uh, if you are interested, please contact either Andy Bischoff, who is back in Ohio, or Bonnie Hover to learn more about doing that walk. Remember that wearing a mask is an act of Christian love. When you do so, please make sure that the mask covers your nose and mouth at all times. I know it is difficult not only to, to hear people, but to talk with that. But if you take it down, it defeats the purpose and you are exposing others. Remember that even when you have a mask on, you still need to maintain six feet social distancing. And you should also avoid touching your face. If you are using a cloth mask, remember that those must be washed after every time you have been in the proximity of someone with those on. If you are in need of a mask, please contact the church office and I will ensure you receive one. The church building will be opening on June 1st at 9 a.m. The office will be open its regular hours. However, the building will remain locked. If you have a reason to come into the building, please ring the doorbell and, and a staff person will let you in. Everyone entering the building must have on a mask and wash their hands upon entering the building. If you would like to have someone with whom to visit, please call the church office to schedule a time to meet with me. There is no immediate plan at this time to begin worshiping in the sanctuary, but leadership team continues to talk about safe alternatives to gathering for a modified worship experience. 
Beginning June 14th, we will have time for fellowship on the front lawn on Sunday afternoons at 10, at 3 p.m., not at 10 p.m., <laughs> at 3 p.m. Um, for 10 people at a time. There will be information about signing up for those times. You will need to bring your own chair. You will need to wear a mask you will need to maintain a six foot distance from each other, but it will be an opportunity to get to visit and see each other face to face. The church is continuing to function even if the building is closed. Please continue to reach out to each other in some form of communication. Thank you to everyone who has faithfully continued to practice supporting the church with your monetary gifts. Remember that if you would like to contribute to the fund to replace the sidewalks out front or out back, depending on how you look at it, we are still accepting those gifts. If you would like to support the church or that improvement, you may mail your gifts for God to the church office at 23500 Center Ridge Road, Westlake, Ohio, 44145. Or I hope that you will take advantage of making a donation electronically via the church website. If you have not received the worship materials for this morning, either via email or in the mail, please go to our website at corucc.org and click on the resources file to find those resources. Thank you for being with us today as we continue to worship using technology. We know that no matter where we are, God is with us. Let us be in an attitude of worship as we listen to the prelude.
let us join together in our call to worship. Jesus prayed for his disciples, giving them into God's eternal care. Jesus prays for us, giving us into God's care. Know that you have been blessed with the love of the Savior. We live in that love and seek to serve God. Open your hearts and spirits now to hear God's word. May our lives be open to God's spirit and reflect God's love. Amen. I invite you to join in singing, God is here as we your people meet, hymn number 70.
join me in the prayer of invocation. O oh Lord, Easter had such an impact on our lives. We walked the byways with Jesus, ate with him, and wept at the crucifixion. Easter morn dawned brightly in our lives at the news of the resurrection, and we sang songs of great joy. Watch over us, gentle God, as we pray and work to do your will. Keep our hearts open to your loving word and ways. Amen. Good morning. I want to show you my shawl. It's beautiful. Um, my sister gave this to me. I wish that you were all sitting with me so I could let you touch it because it's the softest yarn that I have ever felt. It was made by some artisans in Berea, Kentucky. And when I wrap it around me, I feel like I'm wrapped in my sister's love. Now, most of you know that we have people in our church who knit and crochet prayer shawls. And that means that they pray while they're creating that shawl so that it's as if each stitch contains a prayer for the person who will receive it. And Pastor Brooke still often takes a shawl to someone who might be in the hospital or sick at home or just in need of the love of our congregation. And when that person puts that shawl around their shoulders or lays it across their lap, they can feel that they are wrapped in prayer. I think that's a feeling that our scripture shares today. Jesus is praying that God will protect the disciples in the power, in the power of God's name and that the disciples would feel their oneness with God. And Jesus is praying that for us as well. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy God, protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. These are some words from Reverend Sharon Blessard. We are God's beloved. Listen, can you hear the voice of Jesus praying this prayer for you? Can you feel yourself surrounded by his love for you and for this world? Can you sense the power of this prayer as the words enter your mind and heart and being? I've been leading a weekly prayer time, and I have to say that it has opened my heart to what it feels like to be wrapped in prayer. And I will say it's the single most important thing that I've been doing that has helped sustain me during this pandemic. So feel what it's like to be wrapped in love through prayer as we pray now. Loving God, we wrap ourselves in the words of Jesus' prayer. We can know that you are in Jesus even as Jesus is in you, and we as are close to you as the whispered words of a prayer, and we can feel your presence whenever we pray in Jesus' name. In this we are one. Amen.
The scripture readings today are from Psalm 68 and 1 Peter. Psalm 68. Let God rise up. Let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee before God. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As mac wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exalt before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Lift up a song to the one who rides upon the clouds. Be exultant before God, whose name is the Sovereign. F Father, mother of orphans and protector of widows is God in God's holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. God leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked. The heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord, O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Listen, God sends out a voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in God's sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to God's people. Blessed be God. And First Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. Our God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading this morning is from the 17th chapter of John, verses 1 through 11. I am reading from the message. Jesus said these things. Then, raising his eyes in prayer, he said, Father, it's time. Display the bright splendor of your son, so the son in turn may show your bright splendor. You put him in charge of everything human so he might give real and eternal life to all in his charge. And this is the real and eternal life, that they know you, the one and only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. And now, Father, Glorify me with your very own splendor, the very splendor I had in your presence. Before there was a world, I spelled out your character in detail to the men and women you gave me. They were yours in the first place. Then you gave them to me, and they have now done what you said. They know you beyond the shadow of a doubt that everything you gave me is firsthand from you. 
for the message you gave me, I gave them. And they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the God-rejecting world, but for those you gave me, for they are yours by right. Everything mine is yours and yours mine, and my life is on display in them. For I'm no longer going to be visible in the world. They'll continue in the world while I return to you. Holy Father, guard them as they pursue this life that you conferred as a gift through me, so they can be one heart and mind as we are one heart and mind. As long as I was with them, I guarded them in the pursuit of the life you gave through me. I even posted a night watch, and not one of them got away except for the rebel bent on destruction, the exception that proved the rule of scripture. May God add a blessing to the hearing and the understanding of these words. Let us pray. One and only true God, you who sent your son to love us and show us how to love, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. If you have ever been in a group of people and someone says, would someone like to offer a prayer? Suddenly, everybody's shoes get really interesting because nobody is going to make eye contact for fear they might be the one that gets called on to offer a prayer. I will tell you that when I started seminary way back uh, 20 years ago, I felt much the same way. I started at Ashland and Ashland began every class with a prayer. And they would always ask for a student to volunteer to say that prayer. And while most of the time I couldn't see my feet, suddenly whatever notes or whatever book was in front of me became very interesting because I did not want to be called on to pray. But then someone taught me the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, Adoration, Praise and Honor of God and for God. Confes confession, admitting to God where we have sinned, where we have turned away from God. T for thanksgiving, expressing gratitude for things in our life and in the world. And supplication, praying for the needs of others and ourselves. Well, these are guidelines. There is really no right way to pray. This morning's gospel is Jesus' prayer on Monday, Thursday. It is the very end of Jesus' farewell speech that has now gone on for four chapters. It would not have been surprising at all to the disciples that John, or that Jesus was ending his farewell with a prayer. That was typical. When someone was giving a farewell speech, they would end with a prayer. And so the disciples are sitting there listening, overhearing what Jesus is praying for. And Jesus knows they are listening. If you listen to the beginning part of this, there is something unique in this prayer. How many times in the Gospels do we hear that the disciples just didn't get it? They just didn't grasp who Jesus was. They didn't grasp what they were to do, and they didn't grasp what Jesus' purpose was. But this final prayer in Jesus' farewell, written by the writer of John, 
says that the disciples do understand the teaching that he has come to do. Jesus is talking to God and says, it's okay, they get it. They know why I came. And this prayer happening just before the, the arrest and the crucifixion of Jesus is different than in the other gospels. The gospels in which Jesus is praying in the garden of Gethsemane and asks to take this cup if it is God's will. In this prayer, Jesus says, I have done everything down to the last detail that you asked of me. And I'm now ready to come back to you. It is significant in John's writing that John admits, Jesus admits, those J names, Jesus admits that he is returning to God. That he, John's understanding is that prior to coming to earth, Jesus was with God. Before the earth was created, Jesus was with God. Remember that there is no birth narrative in the Gospel of John. He was living as a full adult with God and then came to earth as an adult. That is a very clear Johannine idea. There is no birth narrative in the Gospel of John. We can learn several things by listening in on this prayer with the disciples. First, how Jesus refers to God. Jesus is talking to God with complete faith that God is listening. Jesus doesn't have to do anything grand to get God's attention. Jesus knows that God is listening. And Jesus expresses that faith to return to God. Jesus wants that relationship again, that close relationship that he had before he came to earth. It also tells us something about how Jesus sees his followers. He sees them as understanding, having finally grasped what it was that Jesus was trying to teach. And he sees them as loved by God. They are, as Margaret said, God's beloved. And we also hear what Jesus hopes for the followers. He hopes that they might be one. He hopes no, he knows that God will continue to protect them. He asks for that, but he asks for that with the confidence of one who knows God does and will protect us. But Jesus is praying for his followers. One of the commentaries I read asked, what, how would we view ourselves differently? And when I'm saying our, I don't just mean each of us individually, but how as a congregation might we view ourselves differently? If we started by knowing that we are a community for whom Jesus prays. How would our narrative of a shrinking church change if we could trust that Jesus is praying for us? How would it change our mission? How would it change the possibilities we see for ourselves? You and I are prayed for by Jesus. We are so beloved, and Jesus sees so much potential in us that 
we are prayed for by Jesus. How would your view of failure change if you knew God was praying for you? What might you be willing to try if you knew Jesus was praying for you? What might you be willing to walk away from if you believed Jesus was praying for you? Jesus, who prayed for his disciples then, continues to pray for us today. That's good news. We can then live as people with hope instead of despair. So if we begin by believing that Jesus is praying for us, then what's the right way to pray? Yes, maybe at some point we should probably include all of the things in Acts. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. But how we pray says a lot about who we think God is and who we think we are as well. Is God someone we can trust or do we think we need to offer God direction? Do we pray for our will or do we pray for God's will? Is God someone who is limited or can God do things we cannot even imagine? Is God someone who loves us enough to accept us as we are while loving us too much? to leave us as we are. There is no right or wrong way to pray. Prayer is how we have a relationship with God. And that is what God wants more than anything else. God wants to be in relationship with us with us as individuals, with us as a church, with us as a global world. So how do we change how we live with the knowledge that not only does God love us, but that Jesus prays for us? We live with a sense of hope that the work we do to bring the reign of God to earth is not done alone. That the work that we do to care for those who are oppressed, to seek equality, to seek justice, we are not doing alone. Jesus prays for us in that. We live with a sense of hope that we are loved by God. We are God's beloved, and we are a forgiven people. We live with a sense of hope that even in the midst of being physically separated and not worshiping in the building, God is with us and hears our prayers. We do not need a building in which to pray. You know that. You pray when you're not in church. We do not need a building in order to pray. The church is not closed. The church continues on it is the building that has been closed. We live with a sense of hope that being one does not, that being one does not mean we always agree, but it means that we worship a God who will not leave us. That is the good news. We worship a God who loved us enough to send Jesus to teach us and the Holy Spirit to dwell among us. 
That is good news indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join in singing Nearer My God to You, hymn number 606. in the service that we indeed come to God with our prayers. This morning, I would like us to remember Nell Kronk, who was admitted to the hospital last night um, with congestive heart failure and um, some other concerns. Obviously, she is by herself uh, without family there. So may our prayers surround her this morning. As we gather to pray, let us begin with a time of silent prayer. God, who loves us enough to pray for us, as we gather across time and space, we offer you praise for your love. We know you are the God whose son came to teach us how to pray and who hears us no matter how we pray. All glory and honor is yours. Throughout this week, we have been too quick to condemn those who do not think like us. We have made snap decisions without listening to others, and most importantly, without listening to you. 
forgive us for those times when we believed that our will was your will. As we gather on this holiday weekend, we remember service men and women and their families who have paid the ultimate price fighting for the rights we now get to have. Let us not abuse those rights. We give thanks for warmer days and sunshine. Let us continue to care for this earth that you call us to tend. We give thanks for the frontline workers, healthcare workers, but also those in the service industry who have been seen as dispensable for far too long. We give thanks for all those gathered here today and for the gifts of service they continue to offer to the church and the community. May we continue to hear where you are leading us. We also pray for those who are grieving, the nearly 100,000 people in our country who have died from COVID-19 and the more than 2,000 who have died in the state of Ohio. Let our actions demonstrate our compassion for their families. We pray for those living with mental illness. May they know the peace that only you can provide. For all those who are in the midst of treatment or in the hospital, unable to be supported by family, may they feel your love surrounding them. And we now name aloud all those people whom we wish to lift in prayer. Now, all the powerless, including prisoners and nursing home residents. Dad. Cal. Family. The Zach family and for all the people that are older, that their children have um, more understanding and care for them than they do for the older people that the younger society does not have nowadays. God who answers, no matter how we call out, hear our prayers as we pray in the way Jesus taught us, saying, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. It's not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, is the kingdom of power. I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn, I Must Tell Jesus, hymn number 486.
Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, who all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. All the world to evil allures me, although my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, my friend who helps me, Now, as you go from this time together, may you love God so much that you need love nothing else too much. And may you fear God just enough that you need not fear anything else at all. Go in peace. Amen.